Welcome back, folks. In case you were wondering, no, I have not read Jim Acosta's book, and I don't plan on it. Not even if I could make it through it without a series of strokes. But thankfully, the managing editor of Newsbusters has suffered through it, so we don't have to. Thanks to his 96 post notes on the book, we have some choice quotes that are just begging to be mocked and ridiculed for its narcissism and complete lack of self-awareness. But first, let me take a moment to thank our new sponsor, RibT.com. RibT supports freedom of speech and those of us being censored by the tech giants. Their ultra-comfortable premium daily wear is made right here in the United States. You'll be loose and calm while wearing their cool nylon silk undershirts and underwear, which is perfect for me while I watch the media so you don't have to. If you're in the need for new underwear, get it now and take advantage of my exclusive discount offer. Use the coupon code DRONETECH and get 20% off most items. Thank you. The American public seemed to agree. Ever since that moment at the press conference, people were walking up to me to thank me at the airports, at the train stations, and at the grocery stores. Ladies were applauding at me at their hair salon. I don't believe reporters are supposed to be the story. That's how I was trained. But at the press conference, I had to face a choice. Do we just absorb Trump's attacks, or do we push back and stand up for ourselves? It's a difficult decision, and one that members of the press confronted repeatedly during Trump's first two years in office. In my view, Trump represented a new kind of president, one that required a different kind of playbook for journalists. <laughs> God, based on this one quote alone, you can really tell that Acosta sees himself in very grandiose light. I have a really hard time believing that Acosta is being applauded everywhere he goes, especially considering how badly this book is doing right now. If you look at the Amazon book ratings, you're not going to see Acosta show up until number 304. Conversely, Mark Levin's book about the media corruption and bias is ranked number two on Amazon. It really looks like Acosta is doing what he and his peers at CNN do on a regular basis, manufacturing an alternate reality for their increasingly small audience of hardcore Democrats. Acosta apparently believes that he's above criticism and he equates it to an attack on him that's threatening his life. If you think that you've heard this line of reasoning before, you'd be right. It's very common to hear this claim on the far left at universities when they're trying to shut down speech that they don't like. The only time you'll hear this ridiculous argument trotted out is when some left winger wants to shut down the speech of someone that they're in political opposition to. Radical Democrats like Rashida Tlaib and Elon Omar have also used this claim to shut down their critics. Costa implies that criticism of the media has never been done by any president before, yet Barack Obama did the very same thing to Fox News during his eight years in office without any of the criticism from these same people. Standing at a lectern and brazenly lying to the press is the stuff of despots and dictators. It sounded more like something that would have happened back in my dad's native country of Cuba. This time, however, a few of Trump's aides stood right in front of me and began shouting in my face to drown me out. It was an absurd scene straight out of a totalitarian country like China, not in the United States. Right, Acosta, have you never seen a left-wing or a Democrat party protest? That's pretty much what they do to everybody who opposes them. Are we to believe that no president has ever lied before? I mean, I know for a fact that Obama lied on a pretty regular basis and got away with it. During the Bush years, the media constantly accused Bush of lying. As long as I can remember, it's always been acknowledged that when a politician's mouth is moving, they're lying. I'm not saying it's a good thing when presidents and politicians lie, but Acosta would have you believe that it's never been done before and it's something that's brand new. Also, this idea that criticizing the media's obvious partisanship and lies is tantamount to living in a totalitarian dictatorship is just further proof that Acosta has a serious victim complex. However, if Acosta was doing what he does to Trump in China or Cuba, he would very likely never see the light of day again. Instead, he's free to say whatever he wants despite the fact that he's dividing the country using political propaganda pretending to be factual news. As with Trump's attacks on the press, immigration was an issue that touched my sense of self as a journalist and an American. I'm a reporter, of course, but I'm an American first, and it was impossible to see these events unfolding without feeling tremendous sadness and concern. Now, a shameful stain on U.S. history, Trump's family separation policy resulted in the splitting up of more than 2,000 children and their migrant parents. Think about my father's own story of coming to America as a Cuban refugee. It was difficult to keep my emotions in check as I considered the human cause of such grotesque policy. This quote is indicative of how the media creates lies and then makes them true by simply repeating them over and over.
The separation of children is not a Trump policy. It's a result of the Flores decision, which said that you could not hold parents and children in jail for a certain amount of time without releasing them. Because of that decision, the children are now separated so that the parents can be processed. Again, it is not a Trump policy. This is a lie that the media repeats over and over again. When President Trump likes to say, this isn't a new policy, it's always existed. If you could just help us understand what that means, because when you're saying you're in those centers in 2011, right. and we're saying this is new, help us understand the difference, because it is new that children as young as three years old have to represent themselves in court. Actually, no. Oh, I'm wrong. It's not new. First time that I was covering this was during the Elian Gonzalez That's a story, long time which ago. is like 20 years yeah. ago. Okay. Costa and the rest of the media claim to be so disgusted by this so-called policy, yet they all love and adore Obama, despite the fact that he housed the illegal immigrant children in these exact same so-called cages in the exact same way that it's occurring right now under Trump. When you bring up this argument, fake journalists like Acosta defend Obama by claiming that it was mostly unaccompanied minors that were housed in these cages. Without ever mentioning that most of the children being held right now are also unaccompanied. If anything, Acosta and Democrats share a big part of the blame by encouraging these people to come here illegally, promising them sanctuary, benefits, driver's license, and citizenship. I once covered a neo-Nazi march while working at Chicago's CBS station. It was a dying ideology, I thought. These guys were hardly warranted the coverage. It was a dying ideology, in my view, destined to fade away. But during the Obama administration, it was clear that the ghosts of the 20th century hadn't fully been laid to rest. The election of the first African-American president gave rise to the Tea Party. What I witnessed time and time again covering the Tea Party rallies and marches was that an outburst of racist imagery on signs and t-shirts. One sign at a Tea Party march depicted Obama and Pelosi in bed with each other. I really have to thank Acosta for this one. He is beautifully demonstrating what I repeat over and over. When a Democrat is in office, the fake news journalists make it their job to torpedo and discredit that president at every opportunity. When a Democrat is in office, the media circles the wagons around that president and they shift their focus to attacking, destroying, and discrediting critics of that president. What does this have to do with taxes? What does this have to do with your taxes? Do you realize that you're eligible for a $400 credit? finish my point. I think you get the general tenor of this. Uh, it's anti-government, anti-CNN, since this is highly promoted by the right-wing conservative network, Fox. Again, notice how he conflates neo-Nazis, a violent racist gang, with the Tea Party, which is a fiscally conservative, pro-America, grassroots political group made up of families and old people who were known for picking up the trash after their rallies. Isn't it interesting and ironic that Acosta feels criticism of him is tantamount to violence, yet in his mind, he has a past to demonize private citizens as neo-Nazis for daring to protest a Democrat president. This is exactly why Trump and I call them fake news and enemy of the people. I ripped up my original speech for the folks at San Jose State, and I started from scratch. The students would get the unvarnished truth about what I had been witnessing during my time covering Trump. I was afraid of the president. I later told the crowd was putting our lives in danger. But this was no time to back down. The truth, I argued, was bigger than the president who was acting like a bully. We were in a fight for the truth and the stakes couldn't be higher. Barney, it burns. Quite strange that while giving a speech in San Jose about political violence, you would completely fail to mention the violence that was perpetrated against Trump supporters before the election. Violence that was incited by the media and San Jose's own mayor who basically said that if violence happened to Trump supporters, they brought it on themselves by being there in the first place. Interestingly enough, San Jose is currently being sued because the San Jose Police Department failed to protect Trump supporters, some of them women, who were violently attacked during Trump's rally there. Really, how could Acosta fail to mention any of that in a speech where he casts himself as the victim of political violence? That's all I have for you today, folks. Please hit that like button and share this video. If you want to support this channel, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can also send me a donation through PayPal. Thank you.